everyone. So today's problem is maximum number of non-overlapping substrings. The input given are a string S yes, and we have to return maximum number of substrings that are non-overlapping. Let's understand our problem statement with this example. So the string given is this and we have to return non-overlapping substrings. Let's form a substring and the other rule given is it has to include all occurrence of the character. So what is an all occurrence of a character? For example, if we consider A as a character, if we are creating a substring, it should have all A's inside it. So let's write down the strings that are possible with these conditions. So if you consider our first substring, that is the complete string as our first substring. In this case, we will get only one substring. Uh, but other substrings cannot be considered because they'll overlap within the string. So let's cut off it to this. So start, when you consider starting with A and we, you have to include the substring till here because there is another A at the end. If you consider this as a substring, you cannot include the other four. Further, cutting it down. So when you consider D as your character, then you have to include the substring till here because the D ends here. So in this case, if you again put this as a substring, you can you should be ignoring these three. So again, go to E and F. E, e and F is another substring, but again, if you consider this, you will be ignoring two other substrings that is separate E and separate F. So here we cut it off to E, F, and triple C, where these three doesn't overlap with anything and gives the maximum number of overlapping substrings. How are we going to approach this? So let me scrutinize the steps to four. We have four steps that our algorithm will perform to find these list of substrings that are non-overlapping. Let's see how. Here the rule two, that is a substring should have all occurrence of a character is our key. So if you consider the substring starts with A, it has to include all the characters all along till the last index of the A. If you consider the substring starts with D or substring has the character D, then it has to have all these characters till D. That is how it will cover all the occurrence of that character. So in this case, we can understand we need to know the starting index and ending index of any substring we create. So to do that, in my first step, I'm going to create a hash map, a hash map with strings and an integer array. So what does my hash map do? It will save all the substrings with its starting index and ending index. So this is our first step in the algorithm. Let's code it. As I said, I'm going to create a hash map with characters and its index. I said it was a string, but it was a character. For each character, we are going to store its starting index and ending index. And now inside for loop, we are going to iterate the string completely to store the values. So we are checking if the map already has that character if we already have inserted the character into the map then we have to update only the end of that character because we already would have initialized its first position or its first where it occurs in the first then we are just going to get the characters end index and assign the value to i that is the current position of that character if not if we haven't added that character yet to a hash map then we are going to put it for the first time with initial index and the final index as i that is the current position we are going to add that character and its indexes to i comma i the first index is going to be the same every time 
the starting index of that character, the ending index gets updated as it occurs in the uh, string. So every time when the character occurs for the second time, the second index alone will be updated as its end index. So as the loop completes fully, our map will be updated with all the characters with its initial index and ending index. Now going for our step two. So again, considering the same clue that our substring should have all occurrences of, of that character, consider the string D E F A D. So in this, if you see, there is a A. The starting index of A is before the substring. That is, we are considering the substring from this point to this point. And A is before the substring starting point, which means we haven't covered all the indexes or all the occurrence of that character. So if you consider there is another A after D, but which can be included in that substring, by adding the other two characters. But we, as we have iterated the previous character, we can't go back and add this. Because our pointer is here, we are going to consider any substring after this. So in this case, for every character that is occurring, we are going to check it is a valid substring or not. If it is valid, what is the end point of that substring? So what are we going to do? In our step two, we are going to consider each and every character and point, having a pointer here and putting that as the starting of our substring. And we are going to find the ending of the substring by going to have a method that is find end. So what this method will do, first when a string, when a character is passed or index is passed, it is going to take that index as its starting of the substring and going to take that index last position as the ending of the substring. So let's make it more clear that what is our step to find max gonna do? So I'll find end gonna do. So we just send a index to this method. So what it does, it is going to take the index as the starting point of the substring and find its ending point. So how do it find its ending point? In case if A is the starting point, it is going to take the last occurrence of A as its ending point. In case if we are sending D, it is going to take the last occurrence of D at its, as its ending point. So once it finds its starting point and ending, ending point, it is going to iterate through, through the string and find any character occurred before the starting point. So in our case, let's point or having have our pointer at D. And it is going, this method is going to find the ending point first. The ending point is going to be this D. So our substring here is D, E, F, A, D, T. So what it does, it is again going to iterate through the substring and check if it is a valid substring or not. How do we check valid substring? If every character is covered all its occurrences inside the substring. So in this case, D is only one, sorry, E is only one, F is only one, A, there is a three A in a string, but we have only one A covered here. So it is checking whether the A is before the starting point or after the starting point. Because if there, if it is a, if it is after the starting point, it can extend its end because this method only found its end. So it can extend its end and send it back. If not, if it is before the starting point, it is we cannot make it a valid substring. So it will return minus one. So the function of this method is for that given index, it is going to find the end index. How do it find? First, it will fix the last occurrence of the character at its end. If it is a valid string, that is there is no occurrence of that character before the starting point. Then it will check whether there is a character after the starting point and send the maximum of that as the end. So let's code this part and check. So now we're going to write our get end method that is going to find the end of the substring. It is going to get the string as its input and the map so that it will take its 
indexes because we have stored already in our map uh, what are the indexes of first and last index of each character so it will be useful for this and the starting index which is we will iterate it and send each character's index to get the substring so as I said I am going to iterate it from the starting point to till the end point so what is the end point here we are going to take the end point from the map and is equal to map dot get of the character at this index so this is going to be our end point and we are going to iterate that and check if the starting point of that character is present before this starting index hope you are getting to follow it so the, the starting uh, index of the any character will be stored in the zeroth place that is first position is less than start then it is an invalid substring so i'll return minus 1 if not then we calculate the new end that is already we have end that is pointing the last occurrence of that character if there are some characters that extend beyond that end then update it as our new end that is last position of that occurrence of that character so now we have implemented our get end method this will return the end value so here inside our main method we are going to have our substring start from the first ever character of the word so we are going to initialize a variable substring start as one and we are going to get the end from that get end function for that we are going to iterate through our string So we are going to get the start value here to send it to this function. So start value is the initial value of that character. So once we get it, we are going to check whether the start value is equal to equal to i because if at all the first the character's first occurrence is the start point then only we can form a substring otherwise it is anyway going to be an invalid string so in this case we are checking whether the starting point and the first occurrence of that character is equal only if it is equal we are going to get that end point from that method so we are declaring a integer substring end get end method i so i is our starting point so once we get that method we are entering into a step 3 so once we get the end of the substring length we are going to add the substring to the result linked array list for that let me declare an array list so our get end method will send minus 1 if it is an invalid substring so we have to check if it is not invalid substring then add the substring to our list so we are checking if substring end is not is equal to minus 1 then then we are checking we are adding the result according to the value of our substring end so we are we now have the substring start and the substring end so we are going to add the results based on the length of the end. So in case if our pointer of previous index is here that is substring start and substring end is here. If it is maximum greater than the first pointer then we found a new substring. If not if it is lesser than the previous pointer which means in already existing string we found a smaller substring for example our previous substring was this 
it is added into our list so if something comes lesser than the length of this substring which means we have found some substring that is lesser than the actual substring that is in the list in that case we are going to update the same string if we found something greater than the previous length then we going to create new addition to the list now if string n is greater than then we are just going to add some null value to the list which we will update later according to the length of the substring end so now once we finish taking substring here we have to have our st substring start here because we cannot have any substrings that overlap each other so we are updating our start to the next of this end and then start getting the substrings after this so we are going to update substring start is equal to substring n. So finally, it's time to update our result that is the newly added value. Simply, so if we added a value, it will be at the last in the list so because it follows adding the values in the sending order so what we are going to do we are going to set the value of position result dot size minus one which points the last value in the list and update it with substring of i comma substring star plus one because we have updated substring star to sub so yes that's it algorithm is over we finally going to return the result let's run